My name's uh, Chris Wittick. I'm a director of product management here with Nginx. I'm also joined by Daphne Wan. She's a principal product manager here with Nginx. And we're here to talk about application security um, on top of Nginx. And we're not just going to cover the options that are available today. We're going to talk about some of the concepts that we're, we're working on as well, including a, even showcasing at a high level a, a prototype that we're working on. So it's, it's, uh, it aligns with the um, the controller vision that was laid out by John and Sydney this morning. So hopefully all of you had a chance to be part of that keynote today where they introduced some of the concepts we're working on from the controller side. We're going to talk about um, how we're planning to layer application security, um, not just onto the data plane, but also into the controller itself. Before I start, I want to ask people, who here in this room works full-time in security? OK, a few. That's, I expected that. I imagine most people, you know, raise your hand if you're, in, if you're focused on DevOps. Another few people. All right, so a lot of people didn't raise their hand. Uh, network, NetOps teams, network infrastructure. Okay, how many people work for F5? There we go. Okay, I think we've I think we've kind of balanced that that out. Um, all right, so uh, I have a, a few slides that just talk about why we care about security. I think we all care about security. Um, How is that changing? And and we won't spend a lot of time on the market texture slides because we want to get into more of the, the meat of what we're talking about. But just in general, uh, one of the things I think that is uh, self-evident to, to a lot of us is that the, 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 the fact that we're, as organizations, we've mod started to modernize our applications, we've started to shift them into cloud environments, leveraging cloud infrastructure, that doesn't mean that the threats that you face as an organization are going away, right? You still see threats based on um, you know, unpatched um, infrastructure in your cloud environments. You see, um, you know, people aren't necessarily patching their web applications any faster than they did their on-premise applications. The types of vectors and attacks for different types of environments, especially cloud environments, is there. Um, a lot of the traffic coming in is not even real humans. You know, you have a lot of malicious bot traffic. And the risks, you know, facing your organization is that, one, um, it can negatively impact performance. And doesn't, it, it's not even, I'm not even talking about like a, a denial of service attack impacting your performance. Um, a lot of times people layer in so many different security tools into protecting their applications that that in itself impacts performance, right? So the way we try to go and protect our applications can have a negative impact to performance. Uh, that can in turn have a negative impact on user experience. You know, you don't have to be hacked to have a negative impact of user experience. You can just have uh, you know, the experience of your application slow down and crawl, um, and ultimately can lead to impacts um, for the, the business. So you know, how do you quantify some of the application protection challenges? I know that's, this is a broad topic, um, but you know, some of the high level things that you know, we captured here is that um, there's challenges in delivering apps securely at web scale speed, reliably, high performance and in a secure fashion. Um, some of that deals with the fact that you're probably, a lot of you are layering on all, kind of diff all different kinds of application protection, application security. That, that can have an impact to performance. Um, there's a shifting boundary when it comes to compliance. You know, we, we're, we're in this age of that increasingly different regions have their different compliance requirements and there's not a lot of standardization across those regions. In fact, I think we're seeing in the US that even some of the states are starting to adopt GDPR-like um, um, postures that could lead to a nightmare in terms of uh, understanding if you're compliant in California versus New York versus Texas, those types of things. And that, that's a lot, a lot of challenge. And just the fact that as we modernize our applications, um, that opens up new attack vectors, right? Um, you know, uh, APIs, open up an entirely new attack factor, especially you know, the, a lot of the devices on the other end of those APIs, you know, like a lot of the unpatched um, IoT devices out there that are connecting into your applications through an API, all of a sudden that can be a, an attack vector. Um, you know, the, the, as we shift to microservices, microservices themselves you know, can be a, a, a different type of attack vector. And then there's, you know, as we shift to the cloud environment, cloud transformation opens up different types of vulnerabilities, different types of protection. As we mentioned before, is you, you know, how, even though you don't own the infrastructure, you still have to have some sort of understanding that the infrastructure is patched, it is up to date. Um, a lot of times that's not a guarantee. And one of the more important things I think we see is that as we see organizations um, transform in such a way where they move infrastructure into the cloud and the nature of their network infrastructure team changes to be more service driven, nature of the security team changes to be more service driven, it opens up friction points, uh, friction between 
your various teams. Um, how many of you here, raise your hand if you would say you have a perfect relationship between security and development. They just get along and they love each other. All right, yeah. Um, so I, you know, that right there is one of the biggest challenges we see when we talk to customers, is how do we deal with that friction? And, and that, that also shifts to this idea of the security tools themselves. One of the things we hear is not only is there friction between the security team and the development team, but there's a lack of tools out there that are built security tools that are built for uh, a DevOps mindset for a CI CD pipeline. A lot of the tools out there um, for security still operate in a day of you know, fixed perimeter firewall surrounding the organization. Um, they tend to be um, the type of tool that requires you to stop your development cycle in order to uh, update a security policy and that leads to challenges. And that, you know, that leads to the, you know, oftentimes this perception that the development teams and the DevOps teams think security is a black box. Right, they just don't know what's going on over there. Um, and, and another thing too, and this was something that was talked about this morning too, is that visibility is a challenge. Now that's, you know, that's, that's funny because it's one of those things you expect to be solved. I mean, and in the last presentation, for those of you that weren't in there, Jason was talking about, it's a mystery to him that cert management is still not solved because we've been talking about certs for decades. Kind of the same thing when it comes to application visibility. You know, for decades, we've been talking about getting insights into how your applications are performing but yet, when it comes down to it, a lot of you guys probably spend a lot of time chasing data, correlating data, understand performance of your application and the security profile of your application. Is it, how many of you would say it's easy for you to get real-time access to information about the security of your applications? All right, it's a challenge. Um, so, you know, kind of in short, as we shift our applications to different environments, it doesn't necessarily mean they're more secure. In many ways, we're creating new challenges. And like I said, that manifests itself in the relationships. You have this perception, you know, the development view of DevOps is, works fine for me, my code's good, I gave it off to ops, it's their problem now, right? That's the perception there. And then you have the Dev and DevOps view of security is that security is a blocker, right? I love the title of MORDAC, the preventer of information services. You know, that's oftentimes, that's the perception that development has of security. They're there to block us, they're here to slow us down. They're also here to, you know, to, uh, to make the user experience for our applications even more challenging. And then you have the security view of DevOps. First rule of DevOps, don't talk about security, right? So in this environment with this friction, you know, what, what do you do? And that's, that's an area that we're, as Nginx, especially Nginx combined with F5, that's an area of investment for us. So that's why in this session, we're gonna talk about what's available on the truck today, but we're also gonna to touch on some of the things they're working on because this is really important. This is, as, as Kara mentioned this morning, this is one of the biggest pieces of the Better Together story of F5 and Nginx. One of those pieces is, has related to technology called Web Application Firewall. Um, how many of you are, are, are actively using a WAF today? All right, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about what WAF is. I mean, the nature of a web application firewall is that it's, it is a security tool that doesn't necessarily have to provide direct access to the code itself. It's something you put in front of your applications, can provide protection for things like OS top 10, um, and you don't, you, know, you don't have to uh, you know, update your policies or address vulnerabilities or things like that during scheduled um, um, you know, maintenance windows. One of the challenges with any type of tool, and I'm not here to say that WAF is the best and only tool. There's a million different types of security tools out there. I'm saying this is a tool that uh, is part of the Nginx portfolio that we're gonna be making investments in. Um, but there are always challenges with any security tools understanding how much do you need? Um, what's, what's the right environment? You know, what's the right uh, objective? And so part of understanding how much WAF you need is really understanding what are the security goals. And the reason why I bring that up is that it should align to the nature of the application you're deploying. There's not a one-size-fits-all approach to security. Different applications for your organization will have um, different security requirements. It may be perfectly acceptable for a lot of your applications just to have checkbox security. Check a box and you're done. But for some of your more sensitive applications, some of them that you know, have a lot uh, uh, greater uh, emphasis on sensitive data, you may need to have a more rigid security policy. Um, and that oftentimes requires, again, we talk about friction, it, it often requires a relationship with the business owner for the application, understanding their needs, their exposure requirements, having a relationship with your compliance teams as well. And that all relates, as I mentioned, the, the profile of the application itself, 
right? Different applications gonna have different security requirements, but also how the application is built. A legacy application is gonna have a different security requirement than a uh, modern application deployed into a, a public cloud environment. Um, and also, you know, how, how they're built too, the different services, um, you know, microservices APIs will have different levels of security requirements than uh, other types of applications. And then probably the most important piece is who's gonna manage it? Who manages the security? Um, and this varies. I, I think one of, the, one of the challenges I see in a lot of our customer engagements is that ownership of the security tool shifts um, tremendously depending on who, who the customer is, like who you are. I mean, I've seen SecOps being the one that ultimately owns the, um, the selection of the tool, but DevOps owns the day-to-day -day management of it. But oftentimes security owns the policy, but sometimes they shift it off to DevOps. So that's a question, I, and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think it's just what works comfortable for your pipeline. It's just, it's, you, 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 but, but uh, you know, one of the things that we wanna do as Nginx is try to create a framework for this that, that, doesn't, that makes it easy to re remove that friction in the relationships between your security teams and your development teams. So who's gonna, who's gonna own the WAF policy? Who's gonna own the signature updates? Who's gonna help you manage those false positives? Those are all questions in terms of understanding that. So let's talk about what are the options available today. So we're not gonna go deep in that because we're gonna cover quite a few different options. Um, so if people have questions, you know, we'll be here tomorrow and we'll have some time for questions at the end. But um, when we understand um, the, the options, I wanna talk a little bit about what is our, what's, what's the Nginx uh, you know, kind of approach uh, to how we're building security into our products. And one of them is this, this idea of focus on guardrails versus gates. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges that we see in that point of friction I've been talking about is oftentimes the approach of security is to put a gate in front of the development team, say stop, let me review the security, let me update the policy, I'll let you know when I'm done so you can resume your, your deployment. And, that's a, and that, that slows things down, right? That makes people sit idle. It, uh, you know, it's, it's, that, can, that makes security a blocker instead of a helper. What we want to do is we want to have uh, the capability within the Nginx product set to where we can help the security team set guidance that the development team can live within. And we'll have some examples of that. When we talk about some of the concepts we're building, we're going to specifically talk about how we're exactly we're doing that. How are we helping uh, the security team provide guide rails to the rest of the organization? This is a big part of the message that John and Sydney talked about where we, we want to get to this place to where we can help you deploy once into any cloud environment. Now in the context of the morning sessions and the keynotes, it was talking about um, how you help manage like the underlying infrastructure policies around load balancing and things like that, but also extensive security. Our goal is that security is enabled on a per application basis. And then behind the scenes, we'll make sure that that security policy is optimized for the underlying infrastructure. We're trying to make sure that developers don't have to be infrastructure experts. That's ultimately one of the goals that we have. And we want this, an e-service that we put in there to be very adaptive, right? So how, how security adapts to your environment, how security adapts to the applications that you're deploying. Does that make sense? Any, any, any challenges to that? All right. All right, so let's talk about what's on the truck. So here, um, this is very similar to a view that Sydney showed today of the Nginx application platform, where you have the controller on top, Application delivery API management's out available today with the controller. You have Nginx Plus, um, and then you have Nginx Unit, and of course, it's Nginx open source, right? How many people in here today are using Nginx Plus? All right, it looks like almost more than half. How many people are using uh, controller? Yeah, the controller is still fairly new. Um, so when it comes to security, uh, one of the things that we're, we're, we'll talk about what's available for Plus, I wanna stress ModSec is available today. You can use it for free as an open source tool. You can use it as part of Nginx Plus, not going anywhere. That's gonna be part of the Nginx offering um, this point forward, right? So it's not, the reason why I bring that up because a lot of times people assume F5 has a WAF product, that WAF product competes with ModSec, therefore maybe ModSec is gonna go someplace. It's not, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It has a logical place in that portfolio, so it will remain. But at the same time, we're investing in easy to use lightweight modules based on F5 technology that can be deployed onto the Nginx data plane. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But we're also putting um, security into the controller. So you had, uh, for those of you that saw the session before from Jason, he went into um, you know, 
uh, a bit of detail about what the controller does today. Um, security has an important role in the controller. Um, it's not there today. Well, there's some basics. There's some basic in, in the analyzer portion of the controller. But there's a very important role for security and controller, and we'll talk about that. And the one thing we're not going to cover today um, is API management security capabilities. There are, there are capabilities based into uh, API management today. Those will continue. Liam next door probably can go a lot more depth into that. So let's, let's drill into this a little bit. So, um, so Nginx Plus, what's available for um, Nginx Plus? Um, well, first, as I mentioned, mod security for Nginx Plus. Uh, to take a step back, this makes it look like the only option for mod security is Nginx Plus. Mod security, like I said, is available open source. Um, That's probably how most of you are using it as part of your Nginx open source environment. We do make available a supported module of mod security um, that, is, uh, that we release from Nginx that is available um, for Nginx Plus environments. And the whole point of mod security is it is a module that can be deployed in Nginx OSS, Nginx Plus. Um, and like we talked about, the benefits of WAF. It's something that sits in front of your applications, um, it can inspect all the traffic going into the application, and it's looking for um, matching traffic patterns against uh, what we know as um, malicious activity, right? And if we detect that malicious activity, we can either block it or we can log it, right? So, you, so that way you don't necessarily have to take a, um, a very proactive approach. You can be reactive and monitor what's going on and then modify your approach later. So I mentioned, yeah, there's different approaches. So the open source version, you know, that's, that's available uh, very easily. The Nginx Plus version, I mean, these are, these are fully tested builds that we're providing to you. Um, you, you know, we're providing the updates on a regular schedule and we're providing full support for it. So it's very similar to the model with Nginx Plus where uh, you know, the, one of the primary values is control of the release schedule, um, the, the dynamic updates, and the commercial support model. And again, I stress, this is gonna be part of the Nginx family, even part of F5, right? So we are committed to uh, selling and supporting mod security. And I brought that up several times because I, you know, I've, I've, um, we continue to get a lot of questions on that. So I just hope I hope that's clear. I hope everybody's cool with that. Right? Also, though, there are additional options. If you go to nginx.com products, um, nginx modules, you know you you can see all the certified modules that are available as supported modules for nginx plus. There are a few security tools in there. In fact, you can filter the, the, so here I just did a screen grab filtering, not just by security, but I also included IAM tools too, because obviously like, so a tool like Ping has a security um, impact as well. You can see there's quite a few options there, right? I know um, I've talked to quite a few customers that are trying to run signal science. Anybody tried signal sciences? It's a great, it's a great option. Wallarm, I know I've, I've talked to a few people using Wallarm. I think just today that we announced uh, in the earlier sessions that you know, the certified module with Ping so again, there's a lot of good options here. Now let's talk about one of the things that's new that we're working on, and, and we are working on an F5 WAF module for Nginx Plus. And you know, you know, the, reasons, you know the reasons why you would use this um, you know, in place of something like a mod security. So I, I think there was, how many of you are using mod security? I think there was a few. Um, you ever run into performance issues with mod security? That's one of the things we hear. Like I said, mod security, I think, is perfect for kind of checkbox security for, app for applications. Maybe you have less stringent compliance requirements. But what we hear continually from our customers is the more stringent your compliance requirements, the higher the performance demands for your applications, the, the bigger the performance impact of mod security has for your application. So with the F5 module, we're, we're aiming to take that up a step to really focus in on, on performance as a differentiator. So high performing, very fast, and also really drilling down on the manageability of, of the WAF itself. So easy to manage false positives, have um, easy access to high, high accuracy signatures, um, you know, and um, backed by F5 support. So this is in development, so we're not committing to a time frame yet other than we expect it to come out soon. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, you know, we'd love to hear more from, from people that are interested in trying this out. Um, you know, ideally, we. We, we, you know, this get, you know, we have something that we can showcase to you in the next uh, three to six months. And in terms of that, I mean, this is just a screen grab from the F5 website. And when we talk about advanced WAF, there's a lot to it. And I'm not saying all of this is gonna be part of that initial module that we deploy onto 
Nginx Plus. But this is what we're, the baseline that we're pulling from, right? So we're going to start with kind of that, that, that advanced application protection, starting with, uh, you know, focusing on things like OWASP Top 10. But there's a lot more which we could do. Some of the biggest investments F5 is making in their WAF technology is a lot of behavioral capabilities. Behavioral is more of a, a machine learning approach. The goal is, is that we want the WAF to be self-learning so you're not having to manage the false positives. It's, it's learning behaviors and managing the signatures based off of those behaviors. That's the direction we'll we be taking this as well. So that's, that's options for the data plane. Now let's talk about options for the controller. Now the controller, and again, when I asked everybody in the room if anybody was using controller, I think there was one person that raised their hand. Um, this, was, this is from this morning, right? So this is not necessarily the version of the controller that Jason showed in the last session. This is the version of the controller that Sydney and John talked about. So this is more the direction that we're taking where controller um, offers a lot of value from how you deploy your applications in terms of adding a value like around security and analytics, right? So that's a key direction for us. And, and also a lot of value in terms of the ecosystem that the controller sits within. So we're not gonna go into a lot of detail on how the controller vision is gonna pan out or even go into the detail in the roadmap, but I do wanna talk about where we plan to, where we see security laying, layering itself into controller. And one area is just um, how we protect applications. So that same module that I talked about that's available for Nginx Plus, that, that's gonna be the same module that the controller is gonna use. The, 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 the big difference between the two is that the module you deploy with in, into Nginx Plus, you're managing that configuration yourself. You're managing that configuration on a per instance basis. Same way, basically the same way you, you configure and manage Nginx Plus, you're configuring that, that module but controller will have the ability to orchestrate that for you. So the, what you could do with controller is say, I want to insert security into the deployment of my application, basically hit the button go, and the behind the scenes, controller will deploy the module, scale it up, scale it down, orchestrate it for you. So right, that's, that's one of the big areas of value right there. And a lot of that value comes into how we push the management of the WAF out on a self-service um, portion. So this, this relates to that concept of guide rails versus gates. The idea is that we want the security teams to be able to easily manage security on how it's aligned with an application. And then independently of that, when the, the development teams deploy the application, behind the scenes controller is matching the right security policy based on the characteristics that are required by the security team. Security team to say, for a high sensitive application policy, it aligns to application that, that based on this type of tech stack or the application characteristics. Controller can review that and say, okay, yeah, um, this application is based on this technology. It includes this type of sensitive data included with it. I'm gonna align it with the high security strategy and have a lot of that happen dynamically. Now, a lot of these things too, this, Again, this is vision. So some of these things will be coming sooner, some of these will come later. So right now we're just giving you a little bit of a look behind the curtain of where we're taking the controller security vision. And then the last piece is really around the visibility, right? So um, we really want to provide a very clear view into um, the security performance of the application. Really, the goal is, is that at a quick, from a quick basis, you can have an idea of what's normal for your applications from a security perspective and what's abnormal and have the controller let you know when something abnormal is happening, right? When you have some sort of attack happening or some sort of deviation from the normal, we'll let you know. So this, you know, again, I told you we're, we're telling you a little bit of the short and the long term. Really the vision relates to this. It's this idea that, you know, F5 could publish security strategies. Think of a strategy similar to the templates that Jason was talking about, or a, it's a container for security policies. And those strategies could be aligned to simple things like high, medium, low, it could align to specific compliance. Your security team could review those strategies, customize them, and pick the ones that align to your organization's compliance requirements. Then when the um, you know, development team commits their, um, their application and gets ready to deploy it, the controller can, can take a look at that, take a look at the information about the application and say, based on the characteristics of the application, automatically align it to one of those security strategies. So right there, it's a guide rail, not a gate. The security team didn't have to stop the deployment of the application. And then based on that, the appropriate signatures are applied. Does that make sense? Anybody, would this be helpful for, okay, I see some head nods, okay, cool. And then of course at any time, security team can go and audit things to make sure that uh, everything lined up the way they expected it to.
So I'm about done, and we're almost ready to turn over to Daphne. I just want to summarize some of the things we talked about. So again, if we look at things on a sliding scale, like a spectrum of security capabilities available to your organization, for more basic security requirements, you have Mod Security Open Source and, and Mod Security for Nginx Plus. You know, that will, you know, we'll continue to offer those as part of the Nginx family. As you, know, as you have more stringent compliance requirements or performance needs, that's where things like F5 application security for Nginx Plus. Um, initially, it's more focused on things like the, just providing the signatures and the, you know, the security stats. But then longer term, adding in behavior modules. So you have a little bit more of a self-learning capability portion of that. And then ultimately, you know, we're looking at the, the controller being able to orchestrate value on top of that F5 app security module that sits on Nginx. At this point, I'd like to switch over. As, as Daphne comes up in um, the demo, if there's, anybody has any questions while we make the changeover, we could, we could pause here if there's any questions. Come on. Are you, are you able to go from a uh, current web service, take that configuration, move it to the proposed? Uh, so I, I'll repeat the question, but I, 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 I do remember the guidance that I need to pause and allow time for the microphone to get there. So the <laughs> um, question was, would we allow um, a, like a current WAF service policy to be exported to something like this? That's, that's definitely in the scope of what we want to do. It probably won't be something that comes immediately, but it would be something that comes a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready, ready Daphne? Okay. We switch over mics. Okay, so um, going into a little bit more detail of what Chris was talking about. So the first uh, thing that we want to add to application security within the controller is being able to enable security with that continuous um, CD pipeline that you have. So, um, that you may have. So, first thing we wanna do is enable app protection as a service for your apps in a declarative way through a declarative API with the other traffic services that you may be deploying in front of your app with Nginx. Uh, so, as you can see, um, it's an API and it's basically a JSON spec that you can put it in your repository and so, and, uh, and the parts that, and it's, Dev, um, it's for developers and DevOps because it's declarative API that is app-centric because of the fact that um, it, we obfuscate a lot of the complexity about infrastructure, like what's a virtual server, things like that, from the DevOps person um, and developer. So they're just telling us what's the ingress um, information, like what's the FQDN they might want, um, what's the egress um, information to go to the uh, upstream server or workloads, and as well as security. So even security, they're not saying um, like what policy to use. They're actually describing their app, like what technology stack is their app made of. And then as Chris was showing in terms of that workflow before, is that then the controller figures out based on information about this app that a DevOps person or developer knows, that then we would figure out what's the right policy, what's the app protection signatures to use in front of the app. Then just like any other good DevOps, and as the other sessions of the SRE session, that uh, the keynote that they were discussing is uh, being able to monitor, right? Being able to get, then get the security events and the insights about what's happening with their app, including security uh, violations, and being able to use that, um, get that information from APIs, um, like as Jason in the previous session was asking folks if they wanted an API for even the analytics part, right? So being able to see it uh, out of the box using a portal or b basically using APIs to use other tools to determine what's happening with the app and security of the app. And then, of course, then make changes as need be. So using that same JSON spec that was used to onboard an app with security and application protection and basically making some changes, for example, oh, the app stack was actually needs one more type of stack to ad provide additional um, vulnerability protection. So that's what you would see here. So I'm gonna go into a quick uh, demo, and this is just a concept demo. This is not um, a product demo of the controller, but it gives you a direction of sort of the, the way we're thinking about how this would all work. Oh, and then visibility, so yay, demo, here we go, okay. So let's assume, so in the way we see a user would, uh, you know, try, Oop. okay, let's see. 
Am I marrying off arrangement mirror displays? Okay, great. Uh, let's see if I can make this about a billion times bigger. Uh, maybe, sort of. Uh, hopefully you can see. <laughs> Um, so the way we see a, a user, um, even a DevOps or developer user a lot of times, is that after they install a product, they want to play with you know, what the GUI is letting them to do. So that's sort of trying things out. So they go to the portal, which is the GUI for possibly the GUI for controller, as we see it, and that they would you know, uh, start to create apps and st start to create like uh, create services, which are like locations in an Nginx world for an app. And they, and because, you know, I'm a good uh, security citizen and, you know, sec SecOps is breathing down my neck. You know, I'm creating and playing with, you know, how to enable security. Um, but I still want to do it in a very um, API-centric way so that it can be part of my uh, CD pipeline, right? So some things that I can do now is um, actually be able to understand what I need to do in the API. So I've played with you know, configuring, adding security now, security policy, I enforce. But you know what, I'm, I still live in API world because that's what needs to sit in my repos for infrastructure as code, right? Uh, so what I do is I actually take the API that gets generated, the JSON, um, sorry, the JSON that gets generated, the spec, and I'm able to actually copy it and then actually go to something like Postman, right? Uh, or my script um, writing tools. And actually basically paste it into here, for example, and more or less deploy it. Uh, so this is basically that same API uh, and it has ingress, egress, as well as security information, like the, the type of application stack or technology stack that my uh, application uses, and I then can deploy, um, can then deploy my, the services on Nginx uh, with my application, with my upstream servers. So as you can see, um, any of them are provisioned, provisioned, so I'm good to go, and I go back to my app actually, and I can see that, yep, uh, my, my locations or app services are now enabled for security um, using that API. So I'm good to go. And I, I wanna check that things are actually working as a, from a user perspective. So I can go here and copy this FQDN of that particular uh, app. And I know one of the signatures is, uh, one of the vulnerabilities would be a injection attack like this. Oh, good, okay, so, yep, there is app protection now. Yes, that's a WAF, um, basically blocking uh, that request for me. So, awesome, okay, so that's all looking good, but actually, oh, one minute, okay. Um, so as I said, you know, part of DevOps and SRE is about monitoring. So I wanna see what's happening there. So rather than going into another uh, tool, another security tool, I'm able to see that you know, security is working for me. Here you go, uh, for several days. Yep, it's taking allowed and blocked traffic as well. The app protection is working. And I, now I need to tune. So I can go into tuning and go, okay, I don't know if it's really blocking correctly. So that's one of the uh, things I need to check. But one of the things I do know is that I know it's not blocking correctly if there, it's, it's blocking a lot of IPs, not just the bad IPs, but a lot of IPs. And I can easily just look at in analytics and say, oh, oh, look at this guy. Look at this signature, it's actually blocking 27, and that's the most amount, most IPs. So let me go ahead and um, remove this. So I may, um, so I can actually go into uh, my request, my API call now, and actually add this and remove it. Again, it's that same declarative API that I used to onboard security for the app. Now I can update it and I can ignore it, okay? And again, then, uh, then you can see it working and, yep. And now, 
and now that is getting provision. It's getting provisioning as well. So yeah, so this is um, how we see security uh, working with uh, the control on the controller with Nginx, um, so that it is part of your CD um, pipeline, automated pipeline, and it's. Uh, Pretty simple for a DevOps uh, user to enable, rather than having to wait for SecOps. I think we're at time, so I, I thank you everybody for coming. For those of you that have questions, we'll, you know we can linger outside the doors, but I think we need to. I think we have about five minutes before the next session. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you.